Eight Ways to Improve Your Podcast Description. Thank you for joining me for the Audacity to Podcast. I'm Daniel J. Lewis. Your podcast description usually isn't someone's first impression of your show. Instead, that's usually your title or your cover art or what someone else says about your podcast. Your podcast description also usually doesn't affect your SEO, but the description does give you the vital opportunity to convince a potential audience to try your podcast. Because once they click through, then it's the description and your episode titles that can help convince someone, yes, you're in the right place, you should definitely press that follow button, and here's why. That's how an effective podcast description works. So I have for you eight ways to improve your podcast description. Follow along in the notes, a tap or swipe away, or go to the audacitytopodcast.com slash description. Number one. Remove unnecessary or redundant details. The title goes in the title, the author goes in the author, the description goes in the description. When you mix these together, it creates redundancy and might waste some valuable space. So try to look out for phrases like, this podcast is hosted by, and then your name. Well, you don't need to say that, and I'm not saying your name should not be in your description, because there are sometimes certain good, appropriate places for that. But to say this podcast is hosted by, that's really unnecessary because your name is already in the author field and displayed very prominently with your podcast. Or take another approach. The name of your podcast, like the Audacity to Podcast, is about, well, that's redundant because the title is right there that they can see in big, bold letters and the description is right underneath the title. So why have it say the Audacity to Podcast and the words immediately after that are the audacity to podcast. That's unnecessary. And also even just saying is about, well, this is inside a description. So the description is describing the podcast. You don't have to say what it's about when the context is already a description. It is inherently about whatever that thing is. Or asking a question sometimes doesn't work very well, like looking for a podcast about such and such, or are you a such and such? People often aren't asking these questions that you are using or I see people using in podcast descriptions. And often I see these kinds of questions focus more on features more than benefits. And I'll be talking about that more in number three in a moment. So watch out for these kinds of phrases and others like them that are just unnecessary and redundant. You want everything that's in your podcast to really convince someone to hear or watch your podcast. Does your contact information convince them to listen to your podcast? No, probably not. Does knowing that you publish an episode every Monday convince people to listen to your podcast? Mm, Probably not. Does hearing your background, like you started listening to audiobooks when you were seven and now you have a podcast about audiobooks, does that convince people to listen? Probably not. Now, that's not saying that any kind of background information about you or why you started the podcast is irrelevant, but you have to think about, is this actually relevant or is it unnecessary to convince people to listen to my podcast? Or is it redundant with other information elsewhere in the podcast? Number two, focus on why and W-I-I-F-M. That's what's in it for me. In most places, podcast descriptions don't actually affect your podcast SEO. But even if they did, The most important thing is still to answer two basic questions. First question, why should I get this podcast? And try emphasizing that differently as well. Why should I get this podcast? Or why should I get this podcast? That's a big question people are asking when they hear about a podcast. They might not be consciously asking that question, but it is on their minds. That's what they're looking for. Why this podcast? Why me? For this podcast? Why this podcast for me? Why should I get this podcast? The second question is what's in it for me? That's the W I I F M. What's in it for me? In other words, how will your audience get profit from your podcast? Profit meaning popularity, relationships, opportunities, fun, income, or tangibles. Yes, I think you need to focus on helping your audience get profit from your podcast not only yourself, because when your audience profits, you have a greater opportunity to profit as well. 
So what's in it for me when I look at your podcast? What am I going to get out of it? Not just content. Yeah, this is a podcast. Are you looking for a new podcast to listen to? No, I'm not. In fact, I would say most people aren't just looking for a new podcast to listen to. They're looking for a new podcast that gives them certain information, or maybe they're not even looking at all. But how you describe your podcast can change their minds and make them realize, oh man, this is a need that I have. I need to listen to this podcast. I didn't know I needed this, but now I know I need it. And this podcast provides that. Whenever someone has clicked through to something they're considering, like whether that's a podcast or a product, a movie, or really anything else, the core information they're seeking is why they should choose that thing. Maybe even in comparison to alternatives. Why this book over a different book? Why this movie over a different movie? Why your podcast about your niche over someone else's podcast in the same niche? That why question is so important. That's why I love the book, Start With Why. I highly recommend that. And go ahead, read that, and it can help you better describe your podcast. Start with why. Why your podcast? Why are you making this podcast? Don't focus on why are you making it. Focus on answering that why question for your audience, because that is why you're making it. And you don't have to use the words why or because in your description. But I do suggest you imagine someone asking you, why should I get your podcast? And then what follows in your answer when you say, well, because what follows after that is a good starting point for your description. So what would you say if someone was face to face with you asking you, why should I get your podcast? Focus on that. Why? And that what's in it for me. Number three, replace features with benefits. A feature is a simple fact about your podcast. Like we talk about, and then your topic or topics, or think about this with computers. The features are, this computer has this big of a hard drive. It has this many megabytes or gigabytes of this and that. And it has this software and it has this feature and that feature. And you can compare these features with other features of other computers. And that's just features, numbers, comparisons. That doesn't really tell a story at all. Okay. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM, what does that mean? So if a computer has 128 gigabytes, is that better? It sounds like it's better because it's a bigger number. That's just a feature. And in some cases, by the way, with computers, it's really about how do they use those gigabytes of RAM? Like some of the new Apple Silicon chips are so much better with how they use RAM that you don't need as much RAM as you used to need. So the playing field has become unlevel in that sense. You can't get into this feature comparison game. And your audience isn't really looking for features or your potential audience either. They're looking for benefits. The first way that you can improve this is to extend whatever feature sentence you have with a so that part and then shift that benefit, what comes after the so that, shift that into the spotlight. So here are a few examples for you to consider. The feature might be, we talk about cake baking. See, that's just a plain feature. Cake baking, okay, that's your feature. Switch that to more benefit focus. Learn how to make better cakes. Ooh, now we're focusing on the benefit. That's why we talk about cake baking is to help you bake better cakes. See, focusing back on the why. Or consider this, this podcast shares marketing techniques. Again, that's feature focused. You could change that to grow your audience. Now, I didn't use the same words at all, but the benefit of marketing techniques is to grow your audience or grow your customer base or anything like that, or get communication tips. It might sound like a benefit because I'm starting with a verb, but it's really just a feature. I could say get anything else, and it's really just a feature. So instead of saying get communication tips, I could say I help you communicate better. And you can loop back through this process to make your benefits even better. Try adding a so that either directly or through some rewriting to focus on the outcome you want your audience to get. For example, instead of saying, learn how to grow your business, you could add so that you don't have to worry about your bottom line. See, that's the benefit. Then consider shifting that new benefit, what came after the so that, shift that to the spotlight. 
You'll stop worrying about your bottom line by implementing our techniques to grow your business. Do you see what happened there? I shifted that deeper benefit, not just growing your business, but stop worrying about your bottom line. I shifted that benefit to the front and then put the other benefits and even a little bit of a feature after that. And this can be a healthy exercise to loop through this multiple times. And it may get a little exaggerated at times. But that's okay. This is a, an exercise to make you stronger and make you better and brainstorm some ideas. Keep adding so that to whatever line of marketing you're working with. Add it over and over and over until it either gets completely ridiculous or you find some really good value. For example, you might think of describing your podcast as I talk about movies. Now let's practice this so that you'll know what the best movies are so that you won't waste time and money on bad movies, so that you'll have fun going to the movies, so that you can share the experience with your friends, so that you can build deeper relationships around mutual interests, so that you can live a more fulfilling life, so that, and on and on and on. This doesn't mean you have to use everything you come up with, but it can help you make something far more enticing than a simple feature. So taking this same you know, slightly exaggerated example, your podcast about movies could be described instead of simply, I talk about movies, to something like, live a more fulfilling life with deeper relationships by learning more about the movies you and your friends love. Now, yes, that's a little bit more exaggerated, but isn't that so much more compelling and interesting sounding than simply, I talk about the latest movies and what's cool about them? Focus on the benefits, not the features. You might mention a feature here and there. That's okay. Sometimes people need to know those features. But try replacing all the features that you mention with benefits. That's number three. Number four, try common marketing approaches. Because your podcast description is marketing a kind of product, your podcast, that is, is the product, that your audience needs to, quote, buy, unquote, and they buy it by following it, making that commitment to listen to your podcast, you can try different marketing frameworks to write a better, more compelling, and more relatable podcast subscription. Here are three popular marketing frameworks, and I've played with them myself in some of my product advertising and even my podcast descriptions here and there. First, there's AIDA, which is Attention, Interest, Desire, and Action. This describes the four stages someone goes through before making a decision, like following your podcast or buying something. Following this framework, your podcast description can first catch someone's attention, then get them interested in what you offer, then trigger a desire for your podcast, and then give them the action to take. There's also the PAS framework. That's pain or problem, agitate, solution. This framework takes a slightly different approach to AIDA and focuses first on the problem or the pain point. Then it agitates that with some specificity and then provides your podcast as the solution. Focusing and then further specifying the pain your audience has demonstrates how you understand and empathize with them, helping them to think he or she totally gets me. Another popular framework is the BAB framework. That's before, after, bridge. This takes a more evidence-based approach. It starts with relating the condition your audience is in before your podcast or before applying your teaching, and then the results after they take the action, and then your podcast is the bridge that gets them there. These frameworks and others have helped many marketers increase their profits, and even if you're not actually selling something for money and you're doing your podcast purely for the love of it and all you want to do is have fun, and you want your audience to have fun, and fun is in profit. That's the F in profit. So you and your audience can profit by just simply having fun with your podcast. Even if that's all you're doing, marketing your podcast as if it is a product for sale can help you better reach and convert people to a loyal audience. Number five, take inspiration from the best podcasts. Study the consistently top-ranked podcasts regardless of their topic. Look at how their descriptions are written. Do they tell a story? Do they follow a marketing framework like AIDA, PAS, or BAB? How do they try to empathize with you? How do they communicate without wasting space? 
you might notice that they use several of these methods that I've shared here or do something else completely innovative. For practice, you could, and this is just for practice, I want to emphasize that, you could copy the descriptions from some of these popular podcasts and then replace the points about their podcasts with points about yours. Then try rewording it to be more in your voice and your tone to flow better and connect better with your ideal audience. But please don't simply copy and word spin someone else's description. Use it as an inspiration and then go make your own description. Number six, get opinions. When you have a description that you think is good, try it on some people who don't know your podcast and then see how it piques their interest. If you're willing to spend a little money on this, you could go to a local coffee shop and offer to buy someone's drink in exchange for five minutes of their time to get their opinion on your podcast description. Now, if you do this, please make sure that you promise them you want only their opinion, you're not trying to sell them anything, and you're not trying to get them to opt into anything or give over any kind of private information. You just want their opinion on something. This kind of, we could call it man-on-the-street research, can be extremely valuable because you're getting face-to-face interactions with someone. You're not just getting a comment back. And it's someone who is not a fellow podcaster, not a member of your peer group. And you might actually get someone who doesn't even know what a podcast is or doesn't listen to a podcast. And if you can pique their interest, you probably have a winning podcast description. Number seven, use artificial intelligence or AI. Wouldn't it be cool if there was a tool that could help you do these exact things, like rewrite your description in AIDA format or BAB, or take some inspirations from other great-looking descriptions, or turn your features into benefits, or answer the question of why and stuff like that? Wouldn't it be great if there was a tool like that? Well, yes, there are actually several great tools now that can do this through the power of artificial intelligence, or AI. And since early 2021, I've been using one of these tools called Jasper, formerly known as Jarvis. And by the way, the link in the notes for Jasper is an affiliate link. So I earn from qualifying purchases through my link. But as you know, I recommend things that I truly believe in, regardless of earnings. And the other couple things I'm going to recommend here actually do not earn me anything because they, I don't think they have affiliate programs yet, but they may someday. And if they do, I'll join them but I'll continue anyway with my recommendations here. So I've been using Jasper for a couple years to help me write better, build some writing momentum, and get some new ideas. But now, when you think of AI writing assistants, you're probably thinking of something else that everybody seems to be talking about right now in early 2023, and that is ChatGPT. And at the time of this recording, it's only a couple days after ChatGPT4 was released, and I'm hearing a lot of people say it creates much better content. I'm not going to get into how these things work and the ethics of them. That would be great for another episode. But for now, just think of it this way. Jasper and ChatGPT offer many ways that you can improve your content through what they have. And this is very important. I'm suggesting improve your content, not create your content for you not give you medical or legal advice or weird things like that, but help you to get better. Because the basic approach of these AIs where I think they thrive is when they see, oh, I see what you did there. Let me build on that or let me make that a little bit better for you. So Jasper, for example, and some other tools like this as well, offer templates that you can fill in and then generate potential results. And those templates are designed around specific things. For example, Jasper has templates for the AIDA, PAS, and BAB marketing frameworks for product descriptions. They also have a template for converting features to benefits or template to simplify your language as if explaining it to a child so that you're not so geeky, nerdy, or inside baseball, as they say, with your descriptions. I think all of these templates can be really helpful because you know the kind of outcome to expect and you can have the template generate a bunch of outputs slightly different each time And then you can pick and choose certain points from those or blend them together as you want or just copy and paste one all together that you like. Jasper and ChatGPT also offer a more flexible model that is what a lot of people are loving and it's what has made this AI so much more popular. And that's the flexible chat model where you can type as if talking to a writing assistant. 
You could paste in your current description and then ask it to rewrite your description using a marketing framework or convert your features to benefits and more. You just paste it in. Like one example input could be something like, here is a description of the Audacity to Podcast, a podcast about podcasting. I paste in my description. And then below that, I say, rewrite this using the AIDA marketing framework. And then it gives me a description back following the AIDA framework. There are a bunch of other things it can do. There are so many possibilities. I just had a meeting today right before I recorded this episode where I was talking with some people about the possibilities of AI and ways that we can use AI ethically and to help us make stuff better and faster. And that's what I like using AI for, make stuff better and faster, not create original stuff, but take what you already have and make it better. Or look at a podcaster-focused AI tool like CapShow, another thing that I currently don't have an affiliate link for, but I really like what they're doing. CapShow, that's C-A-P-S-H-O, CapShow helps build episode descriptions and much more from your already recorded audio. So it's not like you have to go in and type something in, give me an episode description for a podcast episode about blank, blank, blank. No, you give it your episode and then it gives you a description of that episode because it will transcribe your episode. So then it gets the written transcription and then it uses that transcription in its artificial intelligence model to summarize it and give a description back to you. Now that's at the episode level currently. They might do something someday where it can listen to multiple episodes and then help you describe your overall podcast. And there are many other things that they're doing with the AI that are beyond the realms of what I'm talking about in this episode. But I'm really excited about what CapShow is doing. These three tools, Jasper, ChatGPT, CapShow, are just three of many tools out there. And many of them are using the same core AI, just with little tweaks here and there, or changing what kind of inputs are combined with your input in order to get different outputs. And these are the three that I've experienced. So I'm not going to say that these are necessarily the best, but they're very popular and I like what they're doing with these tools. And of these three, the only one I earn anything from if you sign up through my link is Jasper. Now, if the others offer affiliate programs, I will definitely join them because I'm already recommending them. But if you'd like to try any of these, then please check out my links through the audacity to podcast.com slash description. I think AI is great for these kinds of improvement and reformat techniques because it's taking your original content and making it better. That's what I love AI for, making stuff better, helping you make it better, and making it faster and better. And number eight, apply these same principles to your episode descriptions. Although I focus this episode on your top-level podcast description, try all these same things for your individual episode descriptions too. Like, Avoiding redundant or unnecessary things, such as in this episode, Bob and Jim talk about, though all of those words just there, completely unnecessary. Just tell us what you talked about or do it in a different way that isn't we talked about or hear us talk about or anything like that. Just tell us. And your episode descriptions can seriously help your search engine optimization. And if you try improving your episode descriptions, before you even record your episodes, you might even discover new ways to make your episode content better just by improving how you describe what you're about to talk about. And then you might realize that, oh, there's a better way that I can approach this content because of how I'm describing it. This is one of the reasons why I like writing my post for an episode before I even record, because it really helps me hash out my ideas. So just simply writing out a really good episode description, not your full notes, but just a really good episode description, that alone could help you make a better episode. So apply these same things, whether it's your marketing framework to how you describe this episode or promote this one episode. Maybe you use some AI to make your episode description better. Maybe you get some opinions from other people. And the big thing that I recommend is that why. Why should people listen to this episode? That's a great thing to think about while you are recording your episode. Why does this matter? Why should people listen? That little story about your dog might be interesting to you, but why should your audience care? Is it funny? Is it relevant to your podcast? 
Are people coming to your podcast because they want to hear something funny? If so, then that story about your dog that's funny is totally relevant. Are they coming to your podcast to be informed about marketing trends? Then the story about your dog is probably not relevant unless it somehow can relate to what you're talking about in your podcast episode. So learning how to better describe even your episodes can improve your content. And going back to the top level podcast description, learning how to make a better description for your overall podcast can also help you refocus your podcast on whom you really want to serve, what profit you want them to get from your podcast, and what kind of profit you want to get from your podcast. So once again, these eight ways to improve your podcast description available at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash description are number one, remove unnecessary or redundant details. Number two, focus on why and what's in it for me. Number three, replace features with benefits. Number four, try common marketing approaches. Number five, take inspiration from the best podcasts. Number six, get opinions. Number seven, use artificial intelligence. And number eight, apply these same principles to your episode descriptions. With all of this in mind then, how long has it been since you've really looked at your podcast description? Is it even accurate anymore? I suggest you go back and look at it, especially with these points and suggestions that I've shared with you, and see how you can improve your description. I did the same thing with my own podcast description while preparing this episode. I started looking back at my description and realized, hmm, there are some ways that I could definitely improve this. So I'm changing my own and will continue to revisit my own description for the Audacity to Podcast to let you hear an actual example of what it was before and what it currently is after. Here was my description before I started preparing for this episode. I believe anyone can share a message to change the world and podcasting is the best way to spread that message. I'm Daniel J. Lewis, and this is where I give you the guts and teach you the tools to launch or improve your own podcast for sharing your passions and finding success. I cover all things podcasting, audio gear, video equipment, editing software. Now, I hope your brain is shouting in your mind. These are features, Daniel. You're just listing features. Yes, because I was. And I continue here. WordPress and plugins, social media promotion tools, marketing, and more with understandable, in-depth information and easy-to-follow steps. Again, just features listed there. If you want to know how to podcast or grow the show you already have, this show is for you. Have a podcasting question or suggestion? That's not a question anyone is really asking when they're looking at my podcasting description. Email feedback at theaudacitypodcast.com or call 903-231-2221. People don't need my contact information in my description. Please subscribe and I will give you the audacity to podcast. So you see, I made some mistakes there and I've reapproached it and I didn't even run this through AI yet. Just taking some of these principles that I've been talking about and practicing them on my own description. And here is at least at the time of this recording, what my description is. And it might change by the time I publish this episode or by the time you hear this episode. So my new description is as follows. I believe podcasting is the best way for you to share a message to change the world. I give you the guts and teach you the tools to launch and improve your own podcast for passion and profit. That's P-R-O-F-I-T. I break it out with little periods just to emphasize that it's an abbreviation or an acronym or an acrostic. They don't know yet. Through each episode, I strive to help you communicate better, fully leverage audio and video gear, use podcasting tools for higher quality and efficiency, become an engaging interviewer, improve your podcast website, grow your podcast, and more. My goal is to help you and your audience get P-R-O-F-I-T from your podcast. Popularity, relationships, opportunities, fun, income, or tangibles. From each episode, you'll get inspiration, learn easy-to-follow steps, and discover resources to help you podcast better. Please join me, Daniel J. Lewis, and I will give you the audacity to podcast. Now, I think that description is much better. Is it the absolute best? No, probably not. There are probably other ways I can improve it. And take a look inside your podcast app. Maybe you're seeing an even different description from that. But I think this is so much better. And I'm practicing what I'm preaching by improving my own description. I suggest you do the same. Follow these eight tips to try improving your podcast description. And if you need help with this, I'm available for one-on-one coaching and consulting to help you improve your podcast 
and improve your podcast description. If you want me to look over your description, help you brainstorm some other ideas, work with an AI to figure out some different things, put it in your voice or better communicate or give you some feedback on something that compels me to even listen. Does it pique my interest? If you need help with your podcast, I'm available to help you one-on-one. Please contact me through the website at theaudacitytopodcast.com. And if this episode has been helpful to you, I would love it if you would share this, comment on it, and engage in whatever way you can. The episode is at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash description. Now that I've given you some of the guts and taught you some of the tools, it's time for you to go start and grow your own podcast for passion and profit. I'm Daniel J. Lewis from theaudacitytopodcast.com. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.